Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline is the voice of University of Utah football and basketball, another friend of the program, Bill Riley. Bill, welcome back to the show, man. How's Las Vegas? I'm sorry. I was in Las Vegas. I'm in beautiful Fullerton. I mean, how's how's beautiful Fullerton? Las Vegas of Orange County. Oh, okay. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) At least the weather's decent down there, right? Yeah, it's, you know, it's uh, not too bad. Probably 70-ish today, and uh, yeah, not too bad. So how how are we doing, boys? Oh, you know, we're just... uh... It's BYU and Utah. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm always excited for this game. We're excited. Yes. I don't know if you're aware of this, Bill, but Utah's won seven in a row. So, I've heard a rumor. I was putting some <laughs> notes together today. I'm glad you guys confirmed that because I was going to use that on the broadcast tomorrow night. Yeah. I had to, you know, being a journalist and all, you want to get that second, uh, that second source for confirmation. It's all about facts, man. All about having the facts and the accuracy. Hey, Bill, what kind of game do, I, do, you... do I get to weigh in on your poll question? Oh, too? please. Can I go, 50, yes. can I go 5410 at Lavelle Edwards Stadium? <laughs> can, wonder... I go Burton's block? can I go Burton's block? <laughs> can I go Taysom Hill squashed at the goal line in the last second? Can I go Brett Ratliff in overtime? <laughs> I'm running for 112 yards. Thanks hey, for Bill, joining us, Bill. It's great to talk to you, man. on the program. It's great to talk to you. Thanks for that compelling and rich take. Hilarious. Oh, good stuff, man. What kind of game do you expect tomorrow night at Rice Eccles Stadium? You know, it's funny you ask that. I, I don't I, – I expect Utah to play well because they've found a nice groove. Uh, the, the defense, they had the one blip game where they just, they just stopped being Utah for a week against Arizona State. Um, but, you know, Manny Wilkins and Nikhil Harry, they have that tendency to do that to teams. So I, I expect Utah's defense to play really well. They've had the right formula on offense um, really since about the, 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 the Washington State game. You know, run first, play action, little zone read, little RPO. Uh, and Jason Shelley did it on the road and he did it at home. So I, I don't worry about Jason Shelley. But these are rivalry games, and, you know, we throw those numbers out a million times, 18 of 23, 7 or less, 11 of those games, 3 or less. Been a few blowouts mixed in there. Um, but, you know, both teams are going to play hard. Uh, unknown for me, Zach Wilson. Um, and I'm sure it's the same way with you guys. He's, he's a fred, true freshman going into what will be his toughest atmosphere and environment. Um, I, I wonder if BYU is going to be able to make plays on the outside if they can't run the football team, struggle to run against Utah. And, and on the other side, Utah's, you, you know, BYU's defense is pretty good. So, you know, if they take away the run, you know, what, what are the plays that Jason Shelley can make down the field? So um, I don't know that we get a high-scoring game um, tomorrow night, but I, I, think it's a, I think it's a game probably in the mid to upper 20s, if that sounds right. You never want injuries to anybody, let's be honest. But when, when yeah. Tyler Huntley and Zach Moss went down, I think all BYU fans thought, okay, maybe we have a chance in this one. Yet, Jason Shelley and Armand Shine have, have done a really nice job the last two weeks. So how different is this team, if at all, with those two at, at quarterback and running back now? It's really funny, Jeremy. They're not different at all. Uh, you know, Troy Taylor's running the same offense. You know, Shine probably doesn't have quite the same explosiveness or vision that that Moss does, but you know Moss is an NFL running back. Armand Shine's a really good running back, and you know Jason Shelley for a guy that hasn't played at all um, looks really really comfortable because he's about the same quarterback that Tyler Huntley is, just about an inch and a half shorter than Huntley. In some ways, he may look a little bit more comfortable um, in the pocket throwing the football. You know Tyler had that ability to make plays outside. We haven't seen Jason have to do that quite yet. He's kind of stuck in the pocket and made some plays, but. The, the team isn't any, the offense isn't any different. I think some of that credit goes to Troy Taylor because he's, you know, he's done a good job calling plays, tailoring the game plan to what, you know, to, to what uh, uh, Jason Shelley does well. But I think a lot of the credit goes to the offensive line up front, and, and those guys have done a really, really good job. The voice of the Utes, Bill Riley, with us on BYU Sports Nation. Bill, this is such a unique situation because Utah has – wrapped up the Pac-12 South. They're going to play in the Pac-12 title game. Uh, it has no ramifications, speaking of the result of tomorrow's game, on what Utah's ultimate goals are to get to the Rose Bowl, and BYU is already bowl eligible. Yet we all know it, it matters so deeply. Uh, is there any reality to some growing speculation that Utah might sit some guys to get ready for the Pac-12 championship game? Uh, I don't get that sense at all. Um, 
this game matters a lot to Utah. It matters a lot to Kyle Whittingham. And I, I think if anybody picked up, and I, I, I've been gone since yesterday morning. I talked to Whittingham and some of the coaches on Tuesday night with the coaches show. I think if anybody's picked up an injury, um, you know, maybe something, a hamstring or an ankle or something that would make him maybe 50-50 for the game, I think you would probably rest that guy and not risk it because you've got a conference championship game the next week. But anybody who's healthy is all hands on deck. I, I, don't, I don't get any sense whatsoever excuse me, that, that, that Whittingham will rest anybody in this game. From the U- Utah and it's, perspective. It's, it's, senior, it's senior day, too, guys. I mean, yeah, that's the other yeah. thing. And, and you've got Kevin Chase Hansen, Utah guy. Cody Barton, Utah guy. Um, Jackson Barton, Utah guy. You've got a lot of guys on this roster that are seniors in a small – Lil Falamaka, captain of the offense, you know, Utah guy. I think there's enough guys from the state that this rivalry means a lot, too, that, that, that they wouldn't want to sit down. It's uniquely placed because, like you said, it's the last game of the regular season. It's the last home game. This is a 6-5 and five BYU team. This is the first outright division title Utah team. This would be the worst time in the last eight years to lose to BYU, would it not? Yeah, yeah, I think it would hurt. But, I mean, if then you won the next week and won your conference championship, I think people would forget about that. But, yeah. I don't think there's ever a good time to lose to your rival, to be very honest with you. <laughs> Tomorrow is a great day, guys, Bill. Guys on rosters, you're talking about guys on rosters, they haven't lost since, you know, most of these guys that are on the team right now, except for Chase Hansen, who's, you know, seems like he's been at Utah forever. Uh, you know, most of these guys were in, like, elementary school and junior high the last time it happened. So nobody wants to be that guy or that group that loses and breaks that streak. It will happen. We all know streaks are inevitably come to ends. It, it will happen at some point in time, but you don't want to be that team that loses that game that hasn't happened in, you know, a decade or whatever that might happen to be. Bill, when you look at BYU and everything they have done in the first 11 games of the 2018 season, what do you feel like they do best and is a real cause for concern for this Utah team? Uh, well, if they can run the football, then you've got some issues because that, that allows them to do other things. You know, it's that old coaching adage, make them one dimensional. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Cause you know, I'm honest. I don't think BYU throws the football very well down the field. I just, I don't, I don't, but when they're able to get Matt Hadley and Swally Canada and Lapini Katoa running the football, that makes life easier on Zach Wilson. And I think Zach Wilson's got a real, a, a nice real skill set, too, of the ability to use his legs and his arm. The kid's got a terrific arm. So I, I think when they're able to be multiple and versatile on offense, that's good. And I think the defense, while I don't think it's spectacular, I think it's solid. I mean, I think that that's a solid group. It'll be interesting to see if they're able to generate much pressure now with uh, or how they generate pressure with, with Corbett Kafusi out. But – Besides that, I, I think it's it's a solid group. I think Kalani here, – here's the other thing. and, and I, I think I talked to you guys early in the year. Maybe it was before the season. Uh, it was very apparent from game one, the Arizona game, and it's been all year long. The biggest difference for me between this year and the last year or so, uh, they, they just look like they, they know, you know they, they've got a plan. They're very organized. They know what they want to do. I just felt like when I watched them play last year that they, they just – they didn't have a purpose. They didn't have a, a – uh, philo- whatever the philosophy was, I wasn't sure what it was. And this year, it looks like Jeff Grimes and Aaron Roderick have brought a real philosophy and a real, hey, this is what we're going to do, and we're going to do what we're going to do our best to do it with that offense. They just look organized with a plan. Would you agree? Yeah, 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 yeah for there's, sure. There's more of an identity, although that identity yeah. kind of changed when the quarterback switched. BYU is now an RPO offense, and they weren't. So that that adjustment has uh, been an adjustment for the offensive line, and they've given up more sacks. And yet Zach Wilson can make plays with his feet. So yeah, there's been this midseason adjustment. Bill, it's great to talk to you, my friend. I know you're super busy calling basketball, hanging out in Fullerton, California, even though I, I wish you were in Vegas, man, for yours, for your sake. <laughs> I, 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 you know, you, you must have been reading my mind, Spencer. I was wishing I was in Vegas, too. <laughs> I've got a big one tonight with Grand Canyon. I get to see Thunder Dan Marley tonight. Thunder, Thunder Dan, Dan and Grand yeah. Canyon Grand tonight. Canyon. Yeah. All right, man. Hey, uh, are you guys going to be up at the stadium tomorrow? We'll, we'll be there, well, I'll, and uh, I'll come and find you. Come say hi. Yeah, come say hi. I appreciate it. It's always good to be on with you guys. All right, thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Bill Riley on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future.